Sure. Hi, I'm Wayne Holmes. I uh, work at uh, University College London and I also work for UNESCO, uh, the Council of Europe and the International Research Centre on AI. I think the biggest myth about AI in education is that it's intelligent. Um, it's not intelligent. It's really interesting and what it can achieve at times can be really powerful, but it's not intelligent. Um, AI is nowhere near as intelligent as a five-year-old child. There are some things that AI can do, like looking for patterns in data and identifying numbers and making predictions, but things that people can do, it just can't do. It cannot give value judgments, it cannot understand, um, it just repeats. Typically what happens in technology is the technologists are very experienced and expert in what they do. And they typically will look around to find, well, where can I apply my expertise? And very often they end up with education because it's something they think they understand. They went to school, their nephew goes to school. But that doesn't help because actually what you end up getting are technical solutions to really superficial problems. And the real problems just are not tackled at all. So I think we should swap this around and we should focus on identifying the real problems. Um, and then ask our uh, computer scientist colleagues to develop tools that will address those real problems. And at the moment, that's just not happening. The ways in which AI can be used um, is to support the things that we really need to support. So at the moment, most of the focus has been on tools that will engage directly with the students to try and do the job of the teacher. And instead, we need tools that teachers can use as they see fit and um, to help them with their teaching. Now, to give you one example in assessment, um, for a long time, I've personally been opposed to the use of examinations for assessment because they're superficial, they're narrow, um, they lead to mental health issues, they're just not very good. And for a while I thought well maybe we can use AI um, as the way to do the assessment. The AI could be used to monitor what students are doing in the classrooms and to determine what are the outcomes, what has the child um, achieved. But then one day I realised, a little bit late I'm afraid, that I was talking about surveillance. I don't think we should have surveillance. So an alternative way is to use AI to support teachers doing the assessment. One way you could have this is where the teacher um, looks at each student in turn while they're working on something else and just makes a, a decision as the teacher using their expertise, their tacit knowledge, their knowledge of the child. Has this teacher achieved this particular competency or not? Now, for the teacher to do that once is meaningless, but if the teacher were to do that every day, and all teachers across the school were doing that all the time, we would need the AI in the background to be normalising that information and producing ways in which the student can really show um, what they have achieved. But the point is it's that teacher doing the assessment and the AI is supporting the teacher, not the other way around. Yeah, learning analytics is a growing field and the work they're doing there is, is good. Um, using data to try to better understand learning. But the mistake that's being made at the moment is the assumption is that we have all the data we need to make those kind of judgments. But actually learning analytics only gathers data for the time during which a student engages with an electronic system. And it doesn't gather data when a student's in a classroom talking to other students, when they're reading a book made of paper, when they're out in the fields um, looking for 
animals or, or plants. You know, the learning analytic systems does not capture that data. So it's fine so long as we recognize that what the learning analytics is telling us is quite narrow. And it's useful, but we shouldn't assume it's telling us everything because it certainly is not. The ethics of AI has been a subject now for the past four or five years. It's getting bigger and bigger. Lots of people researching it. And many of the issues are known. Things like bias, um, things like fake news, and lots of people are working hard to address that. The problem is that all of that focuses on the data and the algorithms, the two core components of AI. But AI is always applied somewhere. And if we're talking about applied in education, then we also need to think about the ethics of the education. So it's not just the ethics of the data that we use in education and issues like surveillance. It's also things like pedagogy, choice of pedagogy. When the AI system uses a 60-year-old approach to pedagogy and ignores the ways in which pedagogy can be used to um, improve student learning, that's an ethical choice that someone's making. Accidentally maybe, but it's still an ethical choice. So we need to really focus on ensuring that yes, we need to get all the data type issues correct, but we also need to think about the pedagogy that these AI tools are embedding before we allow them in the classroom, not after. When the pandemic started, there were so many conferences and positive voices that this is an opportunity to change education for the better, to think about pedagogy, to think about student outcomes, to help students self-actualize. But the reality is, you know, the past year has all been about how do we get the old systems back running as they were? And exams that were once cancelled are now back on the agenda for students. So I think that's the sad thing that we have learned during the pandemic is that the the education system is like a super tanker, it just can't change direction. But we have the opportunity if we use the technology in exciting ways and if we avoid just um, perpetuating poor pedagogic practices and really think about instead of just using AI to make exams happen with e-proctoring and that kind of thing, how can we use AI to genuinely support assessment, accreditation. Only then are we going to be starting to move forwards. When I was 14, we began our two-year course to study French towards an examination. The teacher came in and said, you're the bottom group, you're all going to fail, but I've got a job to do, so let's begin. And of course, we all failed. I think one of the things we need to understand is the importance of expectations. Young children are learning beings. That's what they do every second of every day. They're learning, learning, learning. And when we put them into schools, we work quite hard to beat that out of them. You know, you're not interested in learning, it's all about passing these examinations. So I think we need to step back and we need to think about how do we build upon the excitement that young children have with learning and not let that get lost along the way. And for me personally, it took me decades to get back from that position. Now I'm fine, but it was a long journey. I've really enjoyed my time at EduLearn. The team have been fantastic, making everything so easy for me. The participants have been lovely, asking some really quite interesting questions. So yeah, it's fantastic and you know, I would love to come back. <laughs>